Today we're looking at one of the common tools used to help find fish before you even get to the water, and that's using fishing apps. These can be especially useful if you're on a new body of water or if you're in a tournament. Sometimes you have awful weather conditions and you just need all the help you can get to put some fish in the boat. As an example, I'm hoping to get some walleyes tomorrow on the Wisconsin River, and I know that walleyes tend to like a hard bottom like rock or sand, deep areas or steep drop-offs, and they like to be on the edge of current when they're in rivers. We can use a fishing app to help find areas that match up with that sort of habitat and give us the best chance of catching fish. So this one is called the Omnia Fishing App with the Premium Pro features turned on, so that gives me a few extra layers to really narrow down on the best spots. This app has a bunch of different layers that you can turn on and overlay across each other. So you start with a base map first, either a standard map view or a satellite view or air photo view. I always pick the satellite view because I like the extra detail that it shows me of either where I'm at or where I'm headed to. And then there's a bunch of other habitat layers here. These are updated every week or two, so they're constantly improving. And then there's weather layers. So if you wanted to turn on your weather radar and monitor a rainstorm that's nearby and see if it's headed your way, you could turn on lightning strikes to see if that's a risk near you. You can see storm cells in which direction those are headed. So there's some options there. The vegetation layer is really nice if you're targeting fish that strongly relate to vegetation. So things like largemouth bass, northern pike, muskie, bowfin, perch, carp, anything like that. You can turn the vegetation layer on. You might even really want to go topwater frog fishing. So you're kind of looking for dense vegetation. You could look at the map to see a good spot for that particular technique. For the purpose of tomorrow's trip, I need to see the bottom hardness. So I'm going to turn that on. I am looking to bounce crankbaits along the hard sand, so I need to see how hard the bottom is. I need to see how deep it is and how steep those drop-offs are. Those lines are going to show up on my satellite map. And then I'm going to turn on the wind layer because I'm fishing from a kayak, and whenever you're fishing from a kayak, the wind has a big effect on the success of your trip and the enjoyment of your trip, so I always have the wind layer turned on. So with those layers turned on, this is what I see. The red color is indicating a hard bottom. The lighter shades over here are showing that it's a soft bottom. And if I zoom in on this area, this is an area I found earlier today, these lines here are really tightly packed and that indicates that it's a steep drop off. We can see that it gets down to about 11 feet at the deep edge. We also have a wind layer turned on, so you can see that the wind is blowing from the northwest to the southeast. And if I follow up this western shore, it looks like I've got a, a fairly steep drop off and still maintaining about that 10 or 11 foot depth. And I can go quite a ways up the shore and still have that sort of habitat. So once I get up to this area where the shoreline curves to the west, I lose my 10 foot zone. So right about there where it starts to move to the west, I'm gonna curve out and loop around this 11 foot hole and just head back downstream along that same area. And I'll just get to the bottom of that spot and I'll turn around and I'll go back up again. All right, we've hit that spot where the app said the 11 foot hole would start. You can see we've got 11.6 feet on the sonar right now. So we are right there. I've got a Berkeley flicker shad jointed on the right side, and I'm going to throw this Salmo Hornet on the left side. Should be shallower on my left than my right, so I'm hoping that the Salmo bounces along the bottom, it actually digs in a little bit, and the flicker shad is right above the bottom, maybe striking it once in a while. And now we're just going to pedal along until that spot where the 10 foot zone kind of disappears and we're going to loop out and come back this way. There's one. That's on the flicker shed. Looks like a walleye. All right, first fish of the day. Too small to keep for dinner though. There you go. Alright, so the jointed flicker shad got one. 
If we get another one on this one, I'm just going to take that Selmo off and put on another flicker shad, I think. We'll get back to it. Alright, I had another bite on that flicker shad, so I took off the Salmo, and I've got another flicker shad, a, an unjointed one this time. We'll see how that does. Well, I think I'm going to pack it up now. I've been out for about two hours and got the one fish after about 15 or 20 minutes. Had two other bites. All three of those were on the jointed flicker shad. So I switched my other rod over to a jointed flicker shad too. But no more action since then. To be honest, it is downright cold out here. We had a cold front go through yesterday morning and the air temp right now is 36. We've got a north wind at about 12 miles an hour. So it is, it is chilly. I should have worn my winter boots and snow pants. My ice fishing jacket is nice, but it's not been enough. And this is one of those days where you could come out here and freeze your butt off before you even get a bite. So it's really important to do your homework ahead of time with something like a fishing app to just give you that advantage. When you get out on the water, at least you know right where you're going. Got a spot in mind that's probably going to be productive and it eliminates that wasted time on the water where you're just getting cold and not catching anything. So I'm going to pull these lines in. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you next time.